Hello, this is Lucas Zapotal from uh, the Foreman Core team, and in this video, I would like to show you how to install and configure Foreman. Uh, this will be uh, version 118 RC1 with Performance Copilot or PCP um, monitoring tool, uh, which is available in Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, and Clones. So, uh, PCP is a collection of uh, utilities which uh, allows uh, to gather metrics from uh, systems, either local systems or remote systems. Um, and there are many agents available. Uh, so PCP is a, a traditional monitoring uh, framework or software. It can do things like uh, monitor uh, CPU usage, memory, stuff like that. You would expect that. And also it can connect to various services, things like Apache, Postgres, uh, Memcache, MySQL, and, and things like that, and gather an extra, uh, extra, extra uh, metrics from there. In this video, we'll configure PCP together with the Apache and Postgres uh, modules. Uh, and then um, uh, Foreman 117 or older also has uh, a feature. The Rails application can be configured to send a, a, an extra uh, internal metrics. We call them uh, telemetry uh, and export them uh, via Prometheus or uh, StatsD. Uh, protocols. So we'll configure PCP to read the data. And then I'll show how uh, you can use PCP tools to troubleshoot or investigate uh, performance uh, and do monitoring. So first of all, we need to have PCP installed, which is a very simple task. The main package is called just PCP, stands for Performance Copilot. And we'll do we, we, we will install two agents. These are called PMDA, um, PCP monitoring and daemon agent, I think. And we install them with, with just defaults, uh, just to be um, able to see how uh, installation of a, a PMDA looks like. You can, of course, enable more PMDAs if you want. But those two are relevant for Foreman um, server. And um, once PCP package is installed, we can start um, a daemon, which will do the monitoring. There are two main daemons in PCP. One is called PMCD, which is the uh, PCP um, collecting daemon, which uh, does the actual work of uh, collecting the metrics. And the other one is PM logger, which connects to the P, uh, PMCD and it's able to write down the data, write, write, write down the metrics as configured into what's called uh, archive, archive files. This is pretty much a unique feature of PCP because PCP comes with, a, it's pretty neat and small package, several megabytes, uh, and it comes uh, with uh, ability to create uh, archives, usually with uh, traditional monitoring tools like uh, like Prometheus or, or any other uh, monitoring tools, you usually have some kind of a database, usually a round robin or time series database. PCP doesn't have anything like that, it, but it is able to create the archives, basically. By default, these are kept for two weeks and then and deleted, but you can configure this uh, uh, to any uh, arbitrary amount of you know, days you want to keep the archives, and then there are then there are tools which 
can read the, the data and present the uh, uh, data um, on screen, either command line tools or we, there are some uh, um, user interface the user interfaces. Uh, I'll show this in a minute. Either web or uh, interactive, you know, um, GUI, GUI like uh, graphical user interface. So yeah, we have that uh, package installed. Um, one interesting thing is that there's a there's a command called PCP which will show you a status, current status. Currently, the uh, daemon is not uh, running. Before we start, um, actually PCP, let's configure first a few things. Uh, first, PCP has a special uh, agent called uh, hotproc, and hotproc is able to got, gather uh, more detailed uh, statistics from uh, specified, uh, specified uh, processes. In our case, We'll create this configuration file called hotproc.conf and we'll specify that we're interested all in all of the following um, processes. That's passenger rack up, C WCSGA, celery pulp, squid, smart proxy. So smart proxy and uh, passenger are um, relevant to form and core and uh, most of the other ones um, and Postgres as well. Most of the other ones are relevant uh, when you're using um, Catello plugin. This will enable you know more detailed statistics on these processes. So every time a process has a name of passenger rack app, we will gather much more information about it. And uh, what we are going to uh, um, sorry, I just lost my my other uh, document I'm coping pasting from so just a few seconds and and, and we all, so now we also need to define what metrics are we are interested in and this is the other configuration file we here we're gonna drop here so one interesting thing is RSS, which is by default not, uh, you know, recorded and locked uh, per process. We only get the usual, you know, amount of memory, which is free, uh, you know, but that's per server. And so this is interesting. Oh, we also have IO and, you know, FD count and several other basic things. Now we want to enable the proc uh, agent. The way you enable agent is that you go to varlib PCP PMDAs and the name of uh, an agent. There are several agents installed. We also installed an extra agent, uh, Apache and Postgres, and you just uh, run a script called install. Um, this will ask you if you want to, you know, do you know there's a question about the um, uh, type of installation you want to want you just hit enter uh, going forward i think uh, pcp f starting from version 4.0 uh, won't ask you anymore uh, i think uh, 4.1 is the release that you know remove this question or and i'm running um, Four zero, not sure. Okay, we can now enable um, also Apache module or PMDA. The same way you go to PMDA's Apache and install it. The Apache is running on, on port eighty. That's correct. And uh, this PMDA works uh, um, uh, in a way that it connects every, you know, according to configuration, it connects to a slash server status and grabs some information from there. Um, obviously, you need to have a server status configured. So to do this, 
you just drop the configuration file to Apache server, which you know you, you need to load the mod status uh, shard library and uh, provide a configuration. One thing, uh, well, our installer will actually remove this file once it, because it's Puppet based. Uh, to prevent that, uh, create a custom here line here, which is uh, purge configs false, Apache purge configs false. The same way you would install Postgres, so going to Postgres. Uh, PMD directory and calling this install script. I won't do that uh, um, now. Postgres uh, requires a configuration file to be present with, uh, uh, you know, um, postmaster username or password, or you need to change the uh, authentication and authorization in a PHHBA configuration file. We won't get into details, but if you want to gather uh, statistics about Postgres, there's PMDA for that. Um, it shows basically similar things which are um, provided by Postgres, Postgres utilities. Now we can start um, uh, restart HTTP uh, because we were installing the or configuring the mod status module and restart PMCD that's the collector daemon and PM logger that's the daemon which creates the archive files. It's a good, good idea to actually enable PMCD and PM logger to start from uh, after boot. Now um, that's pretty much it. So if I go to, if I run PCP command, it will show me a status. So PCP is running, oh, I'm actually running a 3.12 version, a little bit older one, but 4.0 uh, is mostly, I believe, um, there is some redesign uh, uh, of the um, PCP internals, but the utilities and everything works the same. So the this video will be still valid for PCP going versions 4.0 or going forward. As you can see, by default, we have several agents enabled. And primary logger or PM logger is logging into var lib PCP PM logger hostname. And then a file name is named using this uh, naming conventions. This is, I believe, UTC um, uh, this is, um, yeah, this is uh, the time, 5 hour, 5 uh, a.m. Now, uh, in the you can stop here and start uh, using a PCP, and you know, um, uh, you know, start monitoring uh, CPU and stuff. And we'll do that uh, at the end of the video. But first, let me uh, also uh, integrate form and telemetry, and configure PCP to read those metrics and put them into archives as well. So there are two things to configure. First, we need to configure a foreman. Um, there is a small setting change we need to do. And we also need to install some uh, dependencies. And we need to install small daemon that will uh, convert uh, statst packets into an um, MMV um, um, API or it will use a uh, MMV API which MPCP uh, provides by default. It's uh, it has a MMV agent uh, which is um, shared memory uh, um, agent that reads uh, metrics from shared memory, and this will uh, do the job. 
Uh, ideally, we would write our own PMDA. PMDAs can be written in C, C++, Python, and Perl. But since you know there was no Ruby binding, and just I wanted to have something really, really quick, um, I've you know come uh, with this uh, daemon, which is using a speed library, which is uh, it's written in Go, uh, and it was the most convenient way of of writing a statsd server that hands over data into the PCP. Now. Let me just install format telemetry first. This would give you uh, two gems, uh, Prometheus client and stats the instrument. So we need those, uh, and these are shipped in the format repositories. And the second thing is uh, to install the PCP MMV stats D. which is currently a 0.2 version. But let me just install a slightly new version, version 0 0.4, which is uh, fixed some bugs and also it uses some uh, slightly new version of speed library, which uh, has more efficient way of storing um, instances. Uh, but after this video is published, uh, this, there is already pull request to uh, bump the version of MMV statsd to version uh, for uh, 0 0.4. Now what we want to do is to enable um, telemetry settings in uh, settings YAML. So go to settings YAML. And there's this telemetry block here. And you want to enable statsd. So statsd enabled is true. That's all you need to do. By default, this um, should be local host IP address. Don't use DNS. That would be you know slow. And the port number is correct. So we'll be using statsd. Statsd is a very, very simple protocol that uses a UDP packet per metric uh, observation um, and this is sent to uh, to a host and port where there is some aggregator daemon running and aggregates all the data which is our component we just installed so let's do, let's save that now PCP PCP stitch is a very tiny, you know, daemon that has almost no configuration. There is, there are few things you can do: enable debug or change uh, uh, change uh, UDP address. By default, it only listens on UDP, uh, but Statsd protocol does support TCP, but that's used for you know rerouting uh, UDP packets somewhere else. By default, PCP that's the uh, only uh, listens on UDP. So let's just start the daemon. I'm gonna enable it as well. Now we want to restart uh, uh, HTTPD once more because we have changed form and configuration actually. Uh, and from now on, uh, uh, foreman uh, passenger worker processes start starts uh, sending UDP packets to PCP MV statsd, and that uh, small uh, daemon uh, puts those um, uh, metrics or readings into PCP using the MMV agent. Uh, one more thing, the MMV or STSD protocol is by nature fully dynamic, while the PCP somehow assumes uh, that uh, metrics exist when you start the, 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 the agent. So we have a push um, 
push approach of StatchD versus pull approach uh, in PCP. So there's easy help. So if I do uh, PM info is a command from PCP that will show you all the metrics which are currently available. So if I do, there are too many, but if I do less, we can just browse this. So let me see, just let me find load. So kernel, all the load is the, you know, what we would expect. If I search MMV, we can see that uh, we already see some, uh, uh, and MMV is the prefix that is used for um, all the telemetry data coming from uh, Rails, coming from Foreman. Actually, the full uh, prefix is mmv.fm underscore Rails, and then underscore the name of my metric. And then there are one or more, uh, these are called uh, labels in the telemetry API because the telemetry API is designed uh, to be Prometheus and StatsD compatible. So we are trying to be um, as approachable as we can. So users can also enable Prometheus uh, telemetry endpoint and read the, those data, uh, those metrics from uh, tele via telemetry, uh, via, via um, Prometheus uh, endpoint. So that's the that's the format of the uh, telemetry metrics. So as you can see, you can see them along with other uh, metrics from PCP. Now they will appear here uh, as the PMCD, the collector daemon sees um, new metrics, but they won't automatically appear in uh, archives. And we do want to ar to archive them. So the trick is to install this simple cron job which does you know one single line sends this command log mandatory one minute mmv to pmlc which is another tool from pcp package that um, uh, is essentially a uh, logger uh, administration tool i would say that allows you to work with the PM logger instance, which are, is actually con collecting all the metrics and putting, the, uh, putting these into archive files. And this essentially says, just get all the MMV metrics and you know start logging them. So if there are new uh, MMV metrics, it will start and it will add it to the uh, archive. And we run this by default daily. So like in the worst case, if there's a new metric that appears, maybe after upgrade, perhaps it will in the worst case appear in after one day. You can run this anytime you want. So if I run this right now, it will, it will just do the job. It doesn't restart PM logger or anything. All right. So that's pretty much it and um, uh, let's uh, before we um, so let's dive in into uh, PCP combined utilities um, so I already showed PCP, which uh, shows you uh, current uh, uh, status, and PM info lists you uh, metrics. So you can also give it a prefix, and will all you show uh, you know all metrics from with that prefix. Um, we can also show. Uh, more details about a metric. So you would provide a metric name and a few more uh, command line options uh, which will show you what's actually, oh, which, which, which will show actually the metadata of the metric. As you can see, uh, PCP 
metadata not only contains a, a, a metric uh, type, which is float in this case, it does also contain semantics and units, which is interesting because uh, if the metadata is correctly defined, then uh, the PCP uh, tools can show you um, the numbers in, in the correct units. So if that's a, perhaps IO, it will, uh, because the metadata you know, defines what the numbers are really, what units are used, it can sh correctly show you that that's the maybe kilobytes per second or megabytes per second, because if you know the units, then the mathematical operation is simple. There's one uh, concept to understand that each metric, in this case, this is kernel.all.load, and those metrics basically forms a tree. Um, each metric can either be a singleton uh, metric, that means that it is just, you know, one, one uh, number, or it can be an instance type, which means that uh, there are several instances. Um, so um, in this case, that's the case for kernel all load, there are three instances, uh, one showing the load for, for one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes. So there are three individual numbers. We can just show another one, which is um, interface speed. Now, a central tool for observing values is PMVAL. PMVAL shows you actual values. So in this case, we're doing one second uh, readouts from off the disk partitions right. And as you can see, this is um, a counter. And uh, PMVAL is converting this to rate. So we see uh, writes uh, per second and uh, it has four instances this vm has a four partitions so as we can see the numbers are there rolling up um, there is no activity pretty much however if you, if you want to see raw numbers provide the dash r and then there is this because this is cumulative not a counter it's just a monotonically increasing counter as you can see, there was a write here. So if you don't want a PCP utility uh, to convert uh, things to, you know, uh, human readable units or uh, rates, just provide a, a R option. If you want to only see uh, instance, there's this syntax. This is a uh, metric name and, and uh, brackets, uh, square brackets, that's the instance name. So these were very basic uh, utilities and there's more. If you install PCP system tools, PCP system tools, there are more power powerful tools. Actually, PCP provides quite a number of uh, utilities. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, about a two dozen of utilities: PMVAL, PMStore, PMStat, PMDumLong. These are pretty much low-level utilities that can give you uh, some numbers, but there are much more convenient uh, tools. One of these is ATOP, PCP ATOP. So you run PCP uh, space ATOP or PCP dash ATOP works as well. And this is actually connecting to running PMCD and daemon and shows you an ATOP like experience. You can of course connect to a remote server as well, using a local ATOP for your, from your laptop. Uh, in that case, you need to uh, make sure that the PCP is listening on a, on a specific for port and, you know, firewalls are all set. 
<clears throat> there are a couple of more utilities. Uh, PCP 8 of SOAR is giving you a SAR like experience. So if you like uh, Unix SAR command, uh, this can get you um, uh, this. Again, this is actually you know talking to PMCD, so you can use this remotely or locally. And what's the best? Both ATOP, ATOPS or, or any other utilities I'll be showing also works with uh, um, archive files. So that's that's uh, that's a unique feature of PCP, and I'll show you this um, in a minute. You can actually grab an archive file every every time and there's a new every day there's a new archive created and you can use this to actually do retrospective analysis that's a very nice feature of PCP so PMstat is another <coughs> uh, PCP command that gives you a stat like utility uh, experience and there's also PM IOstat which gives you IOstat kind of a experience. So let's take a look on these uh, archives. So if I do find viral log PCP, we see there was an archive created here. That's this one for this day. Every day there will be um, a new set of three files, index, meta, and dot zero. Um, obviously, there's some uh, metadata and index uh, information in there. These are efficiently, you know, stored, compressed uh, uh, data files, which you can grab over network, send them or attach them to Bugzilla or issue Redmine in the Redmine, and we can easily. Uh, take a look and retrospectively see uh, what is going on and you can use pretty much any utility I've shown so what I can do is PM stat and the option to remember is the dash A like archive stands for archive and will show you raw data like everything what's what's recorded. It is also possible to use uh, ATOP as well. Uh, in this case you won't see um, process details but it is possible to configure PCP to also grab the information from uh, for each in, for each individual process. Uh, uh, so you would actually go back in time and see a, a top. It is easy to configure. Um, So let's just uh, save this uh, log file or associate this log file uh, to a variable. I can show you a little bit more. PM info shows you information about stat uh, metrics, and of course, it works uh, on archives as well. So you can. You can read the values using PMVAL, and you can even replay the values uh, easily. So this command would, uh, you know, replay disk partition writes from uh, what time? Let me just. Uh, it's f it's five forty one, so that would be start five. When we started, like five thirty to five thirty-one, two seconds each. 
So, you know, as you can see, I'm going back in time and I'm, I'm actually experiencing I, like this is PMVL, but I could use the most of the utilities that do support dash A, dash S, dash T. Um, so I could uh, have the perhaps IELSTAT. I could see IELSTAT. There's also um, a utility called PM log summary, which can calculate uh, averages and means and and and, and maximum minimum. Uh, again, f you can you know, I think I can provide a I can provide a, a time window, or I can you know just grab whole day provide those uh, uh, values from for a whole day now let's take a look on uh, telemetry metrics so let's let me um, just do something on our instance so you know I'll go ahead and visit few few screens, infrastructure, wherever, domain, to, to actually grab some metrics. So PM info, grab MMV, it will show me quite a number of uh, telemetry data. As you can see, it's pretty, you know, the extensive list and it will grow as we, as users will visit more and more resources or hit more and more API endpoints. So we have a documentation in, uh, in the, on the foreman.org. Uh, there is a metrics, um, information about metrics. What you can do, however, is calling foreman rate telemetry metrics, and this will give you an up-to-date list or table, hopefully, with metrics and a nice description. So we do have some metadata, it's not much, but FMRL's active record instances is a metric name. The formatting is uh, wiki friendly, so if you paste it to uh, GIST uh, or GitHub or, you know, RedMy, I will render as a table. But anyway, mm, so this is uh, a number of instances of active record models in Rails and it has a label called class. It's a type of counter. There are three types, counter, gauge and duration. So these are pretty much obvious. This is an interesting one to uh, if you're running into memory issues that we m there can be a, a memory leak or a leak of uh, active record instance creation. For example, we load all the records from database and then just show the first 10. Uh, you would see uh, this counter increasing for individual classes or models. There's a lot more. I won't cover this in the video because um, it's um, not the goal of the video to uh, show you complete list of you what you can do with telemetry. We have the documentation, you have the list and you you can learn this um, later. The one of the most interesting ones uh, are actually FMRL's HTTP uh, request total duration DB duration, view duration. These are the numbers reported by Rails stack. Those are the numbers which end up in a production log. When uh, a request ends, there's also total DB and view uh, times in milliseconds. And these are actually durations. We call them histograms because um, there's some um, theory be 
behind how to measure time or you know time durations in uh, you know monitoring and histograms are um, th things which can provide you a, a approachable way of um, calculating um, durations or means uh, of durations So here, uh, here, and this also includes action and controller. So this is per action and control. So you can tell which endpoint and which action of an endpoint is perhaps slow or regressed. Um, so let's just quickly do this. Let's just quickly grab this. So this is, let's say, total duration would be total duration of subnet controller index. So let's have a look on this one, pmval. As you can see, my terminal is a little bit narrow, but these are in milliseconds. And there are several, let me just pause that for a moment, several um, Um, instances. Mean is just an average. Minimum, maximum, variance, and standard deviation. I don't know actually why these are reported twice. Might be a bug, which we will fix. But anyway, uh, you can see that the mean of this subnet's control index is 138 milliseconds. So, what I can actually do Uh, oh, I think I need to provide an instance number there. No. So as I as I uh, visit uh, subnets, subnet index, so I will refresh several times. This number will change, so it's now eighty-four milliseconds. This, 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 you know, text-based or terminal approach is good for, you know, ad hoc, you know, you want to see the number. What you probably uh, would like to do is to install something nicer. So there is one utility called PMChart, which is a cute GUI, and it's a graphical user interface. It won't work because I don't have a X server route it to my laptop, this is a remote server. So, but what, what I can do is grab archive file and run PM chart on my laptop. I have a Fedora and, and you know, investigate that. Uh, what I can actually show you, if that uh, connection refused. Um, so yeah, I don't have a PMC, let me just quickly start. And let me just quickly PM chart. So here is a an example of PM chart kernel all load, perhaps. And I can include all the three. So as you can see, it's uh, you can put up as many as uh, graphs swap free you know, and correlate those. So this is a, a PM chart utility. But uh, there is more than that. There are... There is a package called PCP Web API, which is a small HTTP daemon, and then um, uh, there PCP comes with uh, two applications, Grafana and Vector. Both are static, you know, um, JavaScript applications, which connect to a uh, web API service, which has an endpoint. Um, in the first case, it's emu emulating a Grafana API, because Grafana is a, a, a project um, that's, you know, uh, 
aims to uh, build a, a monitoring um, you know dashboard vector is uh, a different project that is also a similar you know has also a similar goal but it doesn't uh, work uh, with historical data it only works with what's currently uh, reported by PMC it's a run a runtime a real time sorry a real time uh, monitoring so I just enabled the PM web D and started it and uh, I need to allow port 443 44323 and what I'm gonna do and hopefully this works is for him on that land uh, 44 slash Grafana and here I have a Grafana uh, running and I want to make sure that the newly added MMV stats are added in to into archives because the way this works Grafana connects to uh, PCP uh, WebD PMWebD and PMWebD actually reads the archive files, so it actually you know accesses those files on a file system, and they appear with a few seconds lag, and also the as I as I've said the MMV telemetry information uh, or um, uh, metrics won't appear until a PM logger is notified to actually add start logging them and so here is a PCP uh, here's a pure Grafana experience so we can add a new row and add a new metric so as we can see there's already a load IO the basic things I can um, add new graph edit and I can actually create put an MMV so let's say active record instances and this is per per model and I can show them all it will be a, a little bit unreadable well, as you can see and we don't have a uh, much data yet but you can see that there was can I um, uh, zoom in this is zooming out. I want to zoom actually in. Oh, okay, cool. So we have, we see that the active record session store um, model was created at rate of well, one uh, uh, instance per second. So we're, we're good. Of course, this is pretty much empty <laughs> um, system with no load, empty form and with zero requests. So it's not, you know, this is not a real world uh, diagram. And what well, we can also go to slash vector. Vector is a real time only, but very nice. You need to enter a host name because this is um, um, it was designed to be a you know multi-server. So uh, guys behind this are I think I think Netflix. So uh, they are monitoring uh, I guess a lot of servers. And as you can see, this is updating live. So this is kind of a live dashboard you would put on a flat TV to your DevOps kitchens and stuff like that so so these are the two uh, utilities you can use and that's pretty much all about I have for you today um, everything I have show you will be coming up as a blog post or we can perhaps make this uh, 
documentation or part of our documentation. So if you Google that up, out um, and uh, we will also add a link to the YouTube video as well. So you can find all the commands I show you here and that document. Hope this was useful and uh, we are looking forward to, to grab some archive files and to see uh, numbers from the wild improving uh, performance and uh, fixing bottlenecks of form and core and plugins. Okay, see you next time.